I think this past weekend we're going to look back on it and um, recognize it to be a, a pretty important weekend for our team. Look, Quincy's played 19 times and lost twice. Uh, they lost to Ferris in the, their last match of the crossover, 15-13 in the fifth set. It was uh, they're a very good team. Uh, they have two players that uh, when they're on your side, they're going to win a lot of games. And so I don't think we played all that well, even uh, you know, even considering. But Quincy does that to teams. Um, and so, you know, that first match in the crossover, it's just we haven't done well in it historically, but the pattern has kind of played out here. The, the next two we've done really well. The tipping uh, match was big. We First of all, if you look at the numbers, we, we beat them pretty good. Uh, we were in control in all aspects. It was probably our best offensive performance of the, of the year. So a uh, tiffin team that beat Hillsdale, beat Finley. Um, and some other good teams, and um, had some you know, one of the best blocking teams in the country, um, and we beat them real, real solid. And then we got the rematch with Finley, which is like the universe giving us what we want, right? And um, I could not have asked for a better attitude and like a competitive attitude than we put out there on Saturday. Uh, we were playing to win and to avenge what happened here on our home court. If you remember, they they beat us pretty solid here at home, and um, you know, we weren't full strength then. We were closer to it this weekend. But uh, we walk away this weekend feeling very confident. Um, there's a little bit of spark uh, that happened, and uh, we played really well uh, our last two matches. This is exactly what we need and, and kept the season going. For these last two years, playing with the this mix of, of, of players who are high character, incredibly talented, uh, young, with like really solid leadership at the top, um, they've been bought in the entire time. And I'm so lucky that way. You know, that's the tech student, right? They're, they want to get it right and they're coachable. Um, they they just go in and try to get better. Um, yeah, they're hard on themselves sometimes and, and I can I can push them at times that, you know, um, trying to get better. But I don't think we thought much about the Quincy game. I honestly thought that the way we went into Tiffin was play our game. We know when certain parts are on point, we have the pieces overall to beat anyone we play. Um, and we, we found that rhythm early on, uh, and we just stayed at it, and were consistent all the way through, and it certainly affected the next one. Like, without Tiffin, Finley doesn't happen the way it did. Um, and, you know, we can look back and say Finley felt the biggest because it was such a big match. It was Finley, and, you know, um, but that Tiffin one was the one that we kind of got our confidence back at the right time. Every, uh, every time we play a match, um, people, coaches comment on, what a good setter Tess is. Um, and I just replied, yeah, she's a very good setter. We're super lucky. Um, she is just so poised beyond her age and years has been since she showed up. Leads the league in assists again, freshman of the year last year. And with the humility and just like steadiness that uh, you just don't see in a lot of people. Um, she really makes us tick. You know, you see some teams that are kind of top heavy with points production. Um, and that's fine. It works for a lot of teams. Quince is a good example of that. Um, we're spread out. And we're able to get a lot out of different areas, and that's a testament to Tessa's ability to spread the ball around. And when all the pieces are doing their thing, you can see what happens. But um, the fact that we have Tess for two more years after this uh, is, a, is a good thing for us. It's maybe one of the more enjoyable parts of coaching for me right now. Um, there was some comment made by someone at the crossover, like Rachel could be this person's like new favorite D2 volleyball player. She has fun all the time. She has fun all the time. Watch her, watch on the sideline, watch her at practice, watch her when we're down, watch her when we're up, uh, watch her in film. Uh, she is having joy all the time. And you can see it in her play on top of the fact that she's just going to go try to do good each and every play, and she's still learning. Um, her hitting percentage has jumped 100 points. Kills per set almost two points in a new position and just as a sophomore. And what's more and more, when her and Tess continue to work together, even from the start of the year to now, they're doing things that they were unable to do early on. Um, and that's why you've seen the kind of the steady performance of Tess, I'm sorry, of, of Rachel. Um, but no doubt without Tess, Rachel um, th has less of what she needs to get to where she's at, as well as we could have asked for at this point, uh, considering everything. I'd like a couple of matches back, Parkside, Northern there, uh, maybe one of the, the Finley one here. We started off, we beat four really good teams. Um, we've we've played one of the hardest schedules in, the, in 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 the country, and have a pretty good record. We come into the second half of the GLIAC play having did our job at crossover, 
Um, and now we play everyone one more time with the exception of Roosevelt, right? So everyone in our league one more time. Um, some teams for the only time this weekend with Wayne and Grand Valley, huge games. But the, the message to the team now is now at this point, this, this post-GLIAC, sorry, post-crossover push, every game's important. If we're, if we're talking about postseason, whether that's GLIAC or NCAA, for everyone in that picture, uh, these are games are important. So we're going to take one at a time. Um, but we feel like we have, we believe that, the team believes that we have the tools to beat, um, you know, to, to win these games. Well, their offense is really good. Uh, their, their star player, uh, Kayla, I always mess up her name, Kayla Giroux, is first team All American caliber player. She leads us in hitting percentage in our conference. Phenomenal player. From anywhere she wants it, she can get it. Um, we'll have to manage that, right? They have an outside, I believe it's just a sophomore, maybe a junior, uh, hits the snout of the ball and really does a good job out there. Out there, They play fast to the pin. Um, we, f we think there's some vulnerabilities like any team has that we can exploit, but I would expect a Friday night match where both teams are, are rolling offensively. I think we both have pretty darn strong offenses, and it's going to come down to who passes better, who serves well, and uh, you know who gets uh, more defensive stops. I said this today. Grand Valley is so good that like some of their players who are exceptional players are like – have become role players in a way. Like Grand Valley, I think right now is as good as they've been. It's a, a testament to their team and Coach Jason. Uh, he's got the pieces and he's making those pieces work, I think, really, really well. Uh, you know, they have arguably the best player, one of the best players in the league. Uh, they do really, really good things in the middle. They have this nice 6 2 action where they're, you know, their, their setters are, are attacking as well. Uh, so it adds a little bit of uniqueness to what they do, but it's Grand Valley. You know, um, we've battled. Uh, very well these two teams these last few years uh, when both teams have been up and down or even it's it's you know we respect each other um, and we know that we can we can go down there and, and win this game it's interesting this year in the GLIAC it's an uneven schedule so again this is the only time we get these two teams and so I think uh, you know naturally there's a little bit more to it I think it's great you know I maybe didn't think that when I first started. I thought maybe it was a distraction. Like, why are we having 40 teams in college play in one gym? Like, this isn't very collegiate. But when you go there and you see its importance and what it does, it's awesome. It showcases the whole region together for the national ranking stuff, regional stuff, super important to get that. But it gives us a nice little pause. It gives us, like in this instance, it gave us confidence, right? Like, it paused from the grind of the GLIAC. Before we go on the road for all these matches, we built up our confidence by – you know, redeeming our loss with Finley and playing well. And the, the stakes are high, but they're not, they're different. And it shifts for a little bit. I think it's nice now to get back in the GLIAC and it kind of feels like uh, naturally that final push of the season.